Welcome everyone. We are going to draft some Core Set 2021 today. No shocker. Uh, the chat has voted on um, best of one, so we're here in Premier Draft. Let's see. We've done. We did. Uh, we did a draft yesterday. We ended up was yesterday blue black again. No, yesterday we drafted white for the first time. Right. Um, only went three and three in the event, but then uh, played some pickup games with chat and notched a few extra wins there to make me feel a little bit better about how that deck looked. It looked pretty good, but then, you know, had an average performance, but then uh, some side games showed that uh, perhaps it it uh, was a better deck than it uh, resulted in that particular event, uh, but we had a good time with it. Have I done uh, Demir Rogue Mill? No, we've done... Uh, um, I haven't done any any mill you know mill out, but we've done Demir a couple of times to do reanimator stuff, and that's been uh, that's been fun. Um, but the reanimator tools aren't quite there the way they were in Ikoria, But this is also a lower powered set, so it all kind of balances out a little bit. Hey, Pimpin, thank you so much for that sub. Appreciate that. Anyway, we're going to jump in here, and before I do, I'm going to have a nice clunky transition to my awesome sponsor, CardKingdom.com. Card Kingdom are purveyors of your physical magic stuff, and of course, with the Core Set 2021 out, you probably have a bunch of stuff on your magic want list, right? Uh, those of you, especially out there who play some Constructed, probably have your eyes on some cards from the new set, and... If you are thinking of picking them up, I sure hope that you check out Card Kingdom's offerings uh, via my affiliate link. It lets them know you got there from here, and then you're going to get to one of the greatest retail magic sites on the internet in cardkingdom.com. They've been my sponsor for a long time now, and I really appreciate all their support, and I have no problem recommending a business that I personally use uh, all the time, all the time. Uh, in fact, uh, as a secondary market operator myself, I have a I have a little storefront uh, right now. Like uh, I, I've said this before, but I haven't said it in a while. I buy and sell magic cards. The Card Kingdom buy list is so good. I often hit a spot where I realize it is just more profitable me, for me to take the uh, the stock that I have, sell all of it to Card Kingdom right now at their buy price than it is to sell it on a different marketplace, pay a middle person to, uh, you know, middle entity to, to, to do that transaction and stuff. So anyway, as someone trying to make a profit on selling magic cards, I still end up selling magic cards to Card Kingdom because their buy lists are so good. So keep that in mind anytime you are uh, considering unloading some cards for cash or credit. You know, they give the 30% uh, bonus. So if you just want to flip it into new stuff, you can do that too. So thank you, Card Kingdom. Now let's uh, jump in here, see how long this queue takes today. And we'll get into draft view. Look at me re remembering to get into draft view. We had it yesterday, Tron, and it was okay. <clears throat> Nothing wildly special, but definitely fine. Uh, we got a Stormwing Entity here. Well, this is a, a great card. Uh, it doesn't look amazing at first blush. 3-3 three, three Flyer for 5 with Prowess, not amazing. But the ETB Scry 2 is good, and um, casting an instant or, instant or Sorcery and turning this into a... Uh, uh, a two drop is quite good. Almost, in, you know, you have dreams of opt plus this on turn three, and that's all well and good. But anything in this on turn five is also good. You know, uh, it's just, uh, it's just worth it. You know, even though you're not going to get, you know, the, the 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 dream that you can live here isn't incredible. But this is an excellent solid body. Maybe we wheel something like Riddle Form. I don't know what people are thinking about this card yet, but we'll see. Um, nothing else really even leaps out at me here. Carrion Grub has been excellent. Uh, so keep an eye on that card. But also I'm noting that there's not good red in here. So if we can find some good red, that makes me want to uh, bank into blue red. That would be good. Frantic Inventory is good if you can get them in multiples, but too early to take it there. We're not going to follow it just because it's blue. Death Bloom Thalid is just a strong card. Uh, Devotee is what we were talking about. I, I kind of... Uh, slept on this one earlier. We could take this and see see about uh, trying to make uh, ongoing zombies. What else is even competing? There's not really anything else competing here, right? Freebooter is pretty good. 
but uh, let's take devotee and I'll, I'll see about trying to make this work. We don't necessarily need to be Demir. We could let go of our first pick. Uh, we could let go of devotee too, but let's just take the best card here and see what happens. Gourmand says, stick to the plan. Although I'm noting a complete lack of blue here. We got a crab and that's about it. Um, so this is also a nice reanimation target since you don't have to do the additional cost. And that could be good in, in blue black. Uh, the spell gorger is a pull back towards Stormwing Entity. We could take the Spell Gorger and, and look back towards what I think is the early favorite for best archetype in uh, red-blue. But yeah, Surion says the amount of people drafting blue-red is insane. So like, it, it's kind of, yeah, everybody's kind of trying to find this deck. So maybe we do just take Gourmand here, uh, follow our devotee, and um, see where this takes us. Sanctum. We can uh, make stuff fly. I don't, nothing is leaping out here to me at, as great with what we've got going on. There's some, uh, these were some, we had all three of these cards in our white deck yesterday and they all they all played fine. Um, yeah, we can take Arcanist. Maybe we have, end up getting some, uh, some, some spells here. I don't think this, is this isn't really good enough, right? Uh, although it is to a target creature, um, but it, but it's it wants to discard like a land. Yeah, I guess we could take it. Glide Master is good. Yeah, I think we try to wheel the Arcanist. I'm going to hedge on the Sanctum just in case. Like these are Arcanist and Glide Master are both whatever enough that I think uh, taking a little hedge on um, a build around like this is okay. Uh, now we have Augur here suggesting maybe we do need to think about pivoting back. Uh, what else? Oh, but we also have Rise again. So this is a kind of interesting spot. Are we uh, going to hold open the possibility of red? Or are we just going to dive into black here? We got some couple good black cards, but Kinetic Augur was amazing for us in our uh, preview stream. Like this, it was just amazing. Uh, yeah, it could even work in uh, Grixis Reanimator or something. Yep, or even a, a Rakdos Reanimator. So let's take Augur then, if because we may even just abandon the blue, right? And it still could be the correct pick. Here's a rise again on that thought, you know? Like, we could just be... I think we're definitely taking the rise again here in case we can get to this reanimation package. But... Also, because there's not much else going on here. We take a crash through if we really thought we uh, might want to get to red-blue spells. Um, but yeah, I think Rise Again is correct here. We're still trying to figure out exactly what's going on, but we'll leave ourselves uh, avenues to a couple of directions here and try to listen to what our fellow drafters are telling us. So a second Rise Again. This singer is uh, pretty good and hard to attack into. There have been times where I've had a 2-2 that... Ostensibly, I would trade for a 2-2 flyer, but couldn't attack because they had mana open. Um, Blood Glutton has been solid, actually. Uh, Singer, you think, is a signal? Maybe so, but I think we should stick to um, the Rise again for now. You want to do Really? You want to take the Singer? You think it's that good? I do like it a lot, but I... <sighs> Blue is so dry. Well, Media, it's not about... I'm I'm not... It's not overvaluing it if you're trying to specifically get into a reanimation package, right? If you're trying to do the reanimation thing, it's just a thing you need in your deck. So, you know, we take a... We, on that front, we'll take a Megalodon here over Read the Tides. And I'm saying if we do it, I mean, but in that case, we weren't talking about 
uh, um, a huge difference. For you, I really object, Media, to the, to the notion that because there was a singer, like, I'm going to leave this as the pick. We opened on a Stormwing entity. The next blue pick we found was a singer, like, eight picks later. And you're like, you're saying to me that the packs are pushing me to blue red? Like, I strongly disagree that uh, uh, a second blue pick, eighth or whatever, represents a strong push. Um, that being said, we'll take Thrill here and see if we can get into blue-red, but I, I, I disagree that at that point, at this that, that Rise Again versus Singer pick, that we were being strongly pushed into blue. Pitchburn Devils. Pretty strong to see here. Also interesting to note, though, uh, when the crab was here the first time around, I called it out as the only blue card in the pack, and it hasn't been picked up. Now, it's not good, but often some blue player will be like, eh, whatever, I guess I'll take it. So it's at least some kind of good sign that the crab is still here. Uh, not the dual land we're looking for, because we have nothing to do with white yet, but we can take the turret ogre. I don't think Singer is better than Heron from Coria. That's just me, though. We could main deck that potentially. Well, it looks like red's wide open. So uh, red is certainly a correct seat as far as what else to do here. Well, we can take Solemn. That goes in everything. And there's nothing here that's even going to make me regret this. Solemn Simulacrum is, uh, goes in any deck. Every, every deck is happy to run this. Even if you're not ramping or anything, still worth it. Sanctum gives us a blue, uh, shrine to go along with the red shrine if we happen to get the black shrine that could be pretty interesting um what else is going on here also not much there's a magma that i would like but i'm a little bit enamored by trying to get this thing going um maybe that's not a real thing though unless you're really trying to be five color if we got the black shrine though i would do it yeah, Media points out that Magma is quite good, and it's a two. That's why I was going to curve you. Like, we just don't have much going on in curve right now. This is probably the grown-up pick, honestly. Uh, I, th I think it's what this deck needs. We might wheel the Shrine, and I'll take it if we do. I think I think the deck needed two drops. We I, I, That was a tough grown-up pick, but I made it. Uh, what do we got here? More, more, not much. We could take a unsubstantiate. Another Megalodon in case we pivot back towards reanimation, Grixis reanimation, you know, get another thrill, get these Megalodons. Um, but we can take, like, none of these are good. Swindler's not worth it, really. Although it's a two drop, it does fit the curve. Uh, I'm going to take Unsubstantiate, and then we'll see about uh, Wheeling. No Cage Zombie. This doesn't look too good with for me. This doesn't look too good to me. I don't like the ability, and I don't like that it's conditional. I mean, I, if this happened every turn, yeah. Although, you know, I, I guess we're, we're talking about doing the devotee thing. So if we're trying to have something die every turn, there could be something to that. There's another Shrine, but we're not trying to do it that way. Lofty Denial has been playable. Um, if... I don't know what we're... I'm still struggling on even what we're doing here. Grixis stuff? What was the artifact? Maybe I uh, didn't look too closely at the artifact, Yankum. Yeah, Cage Zombie at best seems like filler, though, James, right? Sure Strike uh, or Lofty Denial. Yeah, we don't have a lot of attackers right now. We're not playing this. I think it's Denial or Strike. We'll probably wheel the Strike. I'm going to take Denial. 
We need to commit to dropping a color. Well, we need to just take it pick by pick and uh, and see. Like the packs will force us to commit when they do. I feel like black is slipping away, and then we just take capture sphere here. Freebooter is good. Freebooter is not great, Mavenap. I think Freebooter. I like it. I think Freebooter is good, but I I, I would just, just come come up short of calling it great. It's not a good top deck, and when it whiffs, you feel a little bit silly. Um, but yeah, I, I also don't love Capture Sphere, though. Uh, and if we were heavier black, it would be pretty easy to take the, uh, the free booter there. Well, we've got this Warmonger. Uh, the only other thing, and there's nothing else to take here, so we're going to continue to stay somewhat open with a Warmonger. Oh, yeah, the land is a reasonable thing. I, I guess we can take the land if we're pretty sure we are uh, we are blue green or blue red. We're not really doing the sack thing exactly, although it would uh, work with a devotee, but I'll take the land. Yeah, you're right. We'll take the land. Still only pack two, so I feel good about where we're at on that front. Finishing blow still being here is something. Another warmonger. No blue to speak of. Now a witch's cauldron. Maybe I have to take the cauldron and try and, and think think of black red again. You want the Lurker? We can take the Lurker, but um, I want to take the Cauldron. I think the Cauldron, like, I'm, I'm now looking at Red Black Sack, and it, it's looking pretty decent here. Certainly Red is wide open, Blue is feeling less so, and uh, Black is feeling medium. That's not doing anything. I guess we'll take it, though. Wish I had a second Warmonger now. Yeah, you're not... It's not that Lurker is, a, like, a bad pick or unplayable. I just liked... Uh, I liked the other, the other card better in that spot. Yeah, I don't think we're splashing blue at this point. I don't see any reason to. I'm, maybe there's some, like, yeah, of course, right? We get this. <laughs> it's like, mate, now, now what pulls us back into blue, right? <laughs> we could splash this, although it's not even like we have that many. Like, we're only at three instants and sorceries right now anyway. I mean, you could say that, Surion, but like, this doesn't even do anything in our deck. This isn't good right now. Uh, pitch burn is okay, but I'm actually like pitch burn wield. I'm going to take another thrill um, because we can with two thrills, we can do more of the uh, rise again strategy. I'm going to try and wield the devil. We already have one. It's a five drop. Ah, here's the uh, here's a controversial card that I've been disagreeing with chat on. I'm a lot lower on this than like chat and limited resources have been. It feels like a, a tall bar to uh, to trigger this. Of course, when you do, it's a heck of a payoff, but you really need the doubles before that's going to work. Like um, it's it's not doing anything here. So, you know, we're not taking this here. I, I would I would think we take Crypt Lurker or Magmut. I think we take Magmut and try to wheel one of these two. Lurker, uh, again, I would like one, but I, I want to focus on twos. Let's let's get um, our two drops taken care of and take whatever the whatever kind of late game card the table wants to wheel for us. 
disagree, Yankum. 4-4 four, 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 5 is not good. 4-4 four, 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 5 is well below the bar, and you'd be sad to play it. If I'm playing a, a vanilla 4-4 four, 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 5, ugh, I am just really, uh, really disappointed. I disagree that it's really good. I think it's good when you can pull it off, but it's very hard to pull off. And I think people feel like, I think it feels like people think it's a lot easier to pull off than I think it's going to be. Um, but yeah, we'll take uh, Geyser here. Not great, but playable. Another Cauldron, another Thrill, Archer here. I don't know if it's non-token, but that's a... I think it's non-token, but that's certainly a reasonable... Uh, would be a, a thing that would change its value a lot, for sure. Uh, Archer... Yeah, we can take the Archer here. I didn't say it was vanilla. I said, if it doesn't do that thing... It, I, I didn't say it is vanilla. I said a 4-4 four, four vanilla for a 5 is bad. So here's a Crypt Lurker we could gra grab, um, but this is the uh, uncommon steal for the steal and sack. Do we have enough sack? Here we have Witch's Cauldron. But I think we gotta try and take this, right? I and mean, we have some sack outlets. Some, I guess we have Witch's Cauldron and Warmonger and that's about it. Oh, ho ho Hobble Fiend, yeah, 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 good call. Okay, with three, that makes me feel better about it. Yeah, let's take it with three. And here's another Hobble Fiend we could grab to make it uh, four. I'm not thrilled about the card, but it is a sack outlet. I don't think sack is gonna matter too much the rest, but it does again, it sets up uh, Fiend and everything. So we'll we'll take it. Here's a Gloom Sower that we can grab uh, to get some possible uh, reanimation going, or just hard cast. It's not amazing, but we can play it with the Rise Again package. Yeah, Fiend is good with the Arsonist. Can be. Sometimes you're like, yep, I could sure do that thing for no value whatsoever. But here's another one, we'll take it. Now that we're trying to do the sack thing, Yeah, nobody seemed to be interested in white. Ah, oh, yeah, Gormand requires a sack. That's true. Uh, Lurker is good to pick up here. Can't believe this Palladium Mirror is still here. This is a very powerful ramp spell. It's just not what we're doing. I guess it's not what anybody's doing. R.R. Woods. I was listening to... Um, Lords of Limited, they do a thing they call their crash course uh, for a set. So if you're looking for an archetypical overview of a, of a format, that's a good way to go. It's not a text resource, so you gotta listen, but if you just wanted to get a breakdown of the archetypes, it's a good one. Well, this is interesting. Did I lose you all? Still got you guys, right? All right. I mean, we have a deck already. If we lost the rest of the draft, I wouldn't care too much, but uh <laughs> I I I wouldn't uh wouldn't mind making my final picks. Although um Yeah, so here, I'm gonna go like this. Now, we have experienced a bug that affected our strategy. Now, it happened very late in the draft, so it was not super impactful, 
but that's not a that's not right. That's not how that's supposed to go. And my experience was severely diminished by uh, by that bug. And so I'm going to file if I can find it. I put it up here. I, I even made a link to it. I just got to find it. Streamlines. No, that's not it. Anybody have the... Uh... Oh, there it is. I found it. Sorry. Bugs. So I'm going to go here. This is the... And I'll even... I, we can fill it out together. Ready? Um, submit a request. Report a problem in your event. Bug title, um, error during draft, or I'll call it like disconnect error. Oop. What's going on here? This is weird. Post a new idea? Oh, how do I, re let's see. Oh, I guess now they're saying um, don't report the same bug here. So I'll vote for this. Login. Now maybe that I'm logged in, I can, I'm trying to get compensation because this is what you, you know, if they, if, if their issue, here we go, events. Um, So historically, when I've done this, they have given me a refund right away. I don't know if they're going to do it right away this time, but um, I was drafting and lost the last half of a pack due to disconnect errors. Hello. Screenshots. Because I just took a screenshot. So now I'm going to uh, reporting bugs. Historically, simply the act of reporting a bug has been enough to uh, trigger a reimbursement chain, you know, situation with with wizards. So now that I did that, I would like to did it say success. I usually like to get some feedback that my thing was successful, but. Uh, what I'm going to do is see if this leads to a, um, a reimbursement. And I'll check back on Monday, and if there's an auto reimbursement from this process, I'll let you know. And if not, we'll know that if you want to actually get uh, compensation for your event from a bug like we experienced, there's something else to do that we'll figure out. But anyway, uh, let's close. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I've, I realize now I didn't have you on left monitor, and I've just been talking through it here. But uh, here's this. Um, here's this. It's pretty boring anyway. Um, but it's just a sheet to enter in uh, your your bugs, and we'll see we'll see if it leads to anything. Anyway, let's get back to it. Maybe I'll cut that out of the YouTube video, but I did want to uh, at least show you all the link and show you that you can reach out to wizards when you have a dissatisfactory experience, and they often take care of you. Uh, it doesn't. You say, Queen, this this won't trigger a reimbursement. Hmm, that's interesting. They changed that then, right? Because it used to be that you fill out a form and they like throw some. Uh, throw some gems at you or whatever, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's get back to here, though.
Yeah, yeah. If we don't get uh, reimbursement for that, I, I might reach out. Uh, I'll try to figure out what what we really have to do on uh, on Monday to make that happen. But let's get to deck building and play some magic, shall we? Forty nine cards, but some of these, obviously, I don't know. Got to figure out what our auto picks were and get them out of the deck. Probably don't want two blood gluttons. What are we looking at here? Twenty nine. Got another thrill. I don't think we want three thrills. Don't think we're playing this. Yeah, we can cut the cliffs. I never, I barely even see the lands till later in the building process, but yes, we can cut the cliffs. Although with the simulacrum and the cliffs, we could throw in an island and splash if we felt like we really just needed a, an extra piece of removal or something. Thing is, there's not much here that we would want to splash. Um. Kinetic Augur, Instants and Sorceries is what it's counting, and we're looking at six total. I mean, we might even play this is the thing. It's not like we're heavy at three. Um, this is playable, but I don't... I don't think I want to run this. Augur might not be good enough here with a with our light instant sorcery theme. It's not even a theme with the light quantity of instants and sorceries. So, but is it okay? It might even be okay just because of the uh, the built in rummage. Maybe Turret Ogre could sit, although it does have reach, as we know. Strictly Cheese asks, is it worth it to buy the 750 gold pack of M21 in daily deals today? It is never worth it to me. I just don't buy packs. Um, I, I shouldn't say never. Uh, it would be worth it to me down at the... Uh, you know, if they if they charge like uh, um, 20, 20, 40 gems for it, whatever the equivalent is, then I would they would do it. But I I don't need to buy packs. Okay. Uh, anyway, let's finish up this. What are we cutting? What are we cutting? We are still looking to cut creatures. Got twenty of those. Maybe we do just uh, we're just so low on threes. This is going to be more like up here. We were cutting. Uh, I don't like this deck, by the way. Maybe if we come up with more traitorous greeds. Although, I, I can I say that I love this design? Uh, one of the problems with making um, steel creatures cheap is that then steel and sack becomes too good, right? If steel and sack is, if I can on turn three, Steal something of yours and sack it and kill something. You know, it's just too powerful, right? So you gotta you gotta make sure that it takes a little bit of effort for you to just steal a creature. But then, if you make it too expensive, then suddenly actually doing the thing of stealing and sacking becomes like some seven mana affair that you can never pull off and isn't fun either. So I love this design because, uh, and I'm sh I I would bet that whoever designed this card went through exactly the mental the the thoughts that I just had there. Like what? Because it's a way to design magic cards. If you're like, uh, what frustrates me about a given strategy, or what frustrates me about you know what do I what do I wish that I could do uh, with a given archetype or whatever? And so Trader's Greed is brilliant because it says. It's still expensive. It's four mana. You have to you have to have four mana before you can steal something. But then we're going to give you two mana that you can then use uh, as a rebate to spend on killing the thing, right? So it it makes it take at least until turn four before you can do it, uh, and then um, and then but then it gives you the tools to actually do the combo and sacrifice something afterwards. Uh, I do agree that the uh, the ability to make any color of mana with this is weird, but they're kind of leaning on Manamorphose as precedent, I think, of red filtering, of temporary red filtering. Uh, but also, I think uh, it also shows how hybrid mana is the source of a lot of um, precedence, annoying precedence. Like, 
Manamorphos gives traitorous greed their reason to exist, but Manamorphos only exists because of the desperation R&D has to find mechanics that fit into two colors. Yes, uh, Tech points out that you cannot uh, cast this attack with it and then kill it, but if you are just trying to steal and kill, it's, a, it's great, right? Yeah, and red makes treasure, which is also uh, second uh, temporary color fixing. There's some little examples of it. Anyway, sorry, a little aside there, but I do love the design of this card, so I wanted to talk about it. So I did. Now, what are our worst creatures? And let's cut them. Is blood glutton not worth it when we're not doing the lifelink thing? Let's cut a blood glutton. I mean, we'll think of geyser as a five drop. Um, I don't know if the looting is good enough here. I think I'm just going to get rid of the auger. And... I guess this ogre is just too underwhelming to keep, even though I hate this hole we have at three. Tavern Swindler can be cut, but it is just a two drop. I don't mind just having twos, but... Maybe we're thick enough here. We have one, uh, we, we would play Thrill on two. So yeah, we do have a lot of action for turn two. Um, maybe we do cut this. It is really just, we're not doing anything with lifelink, right? So, making sure I, I'm not wrong about that. Yeah, all right, I'm in for cutting the Swindler. All right, let's try this. Um, it's kind of drafted the hard way big time here. How about um, hard thrills? And let's see, I know we had some redemptions today. Uh, Prime Doc, Basic Lands, did you choose? Flipperoo, what do you want? Sleeve wide, sleeve wise. You around, Flip? I'm gonna pick them myself if Flip doesn't. Let's go, here we get some Godzilla action, but let me know, Flip. And, uh... I thought Prime Doc redeemed lands. Did you redeem lands? Thank you for the sub. Traitor's Greed on the box. Oh, you redeemed, huh? Uh, my, my notes were not accurate then. I don't know what my cut and paste came up with there. Easy enough. Nice front-loaded lands. I think we're good here. I am not loving this deck, but maybe it'll surprise me. I, I mean, it just doesn't feel like it has a great plan. Like, what's our plan? Is our plan to get, you know, sack value? I don't know, just, just like, I don't know, like Gourmand, is Gourmand our plan? Yeah, I know. I, I So anyway, we can, have, we can just get there because magic is magic and we play some stuff and, and win, but I don't love the uh, where we're at. Yeah, and I will blame the half pack. When I mean, we did miss some significant picks, so anyway. Pat reminds that if we can uh, reanimate Gourmand, it's excellent for us. 
No sack outlet yet, but we have our greed, so I'm excited about that. We're gonna keep and hope to find some middle action here. We start on one and then pick up again at four, which is not ideal right now, but we have a couple of draws to find some action. Come on, two drop. Mm, not a two drop, but it is a play for three, so I'm happy about that. That's a good play for three. And we don't even have many threes, so finding any of our threes is uh, pretty good here. Oh, yeah, I did a, a, my system restarted, so uh, I don't have Cardboard Live open. Let me get that open for you. Uh, let's see. I'm going to be land risky here since we have this simulacrum. I think we get rid of uh, Lurker Swamp and keep the others. Oh, yeah, sorry. Scene. Here you go. Duke. Um, all right, you found our fourth land. That's good. Gets us right back on track. They play a nice creature. We even have the greed ready to go with the warmonger. They don't. Interesting. That's fine. It means we get to try for a simulacrum. Um, do we do it now? We don't have any instants, so if we send in and they have something to flash in, we just kind of get stuck. Um, I could play the Hobble Fiend so that we could sacrifice if need be. Uh, if it's the tap kill spell, we just have to play into it. They're going to get it at some point, right? So I'm going to go in for the attack and not play the Hobble Fiend. Uh, this could... I'm very nervous here. Four... Four open mana in three colors and five cards suggests that something is going on. But it, is, it seems like it's probably swift retribution, or, yeah, like kill tapped creatures. So I'm just going to send in and probably expect that we lose one of our creatures here. That's all right. All right, that's great. Did not expect that to connect. And now we'll try Simulacrum if it lands. Great. If not, this is also... Uh, not as important as, for example, resolving this traitorous greed when they come up with a, uh, a defense. Did I miss a redemption? Oh, I see. You're suggesting a meme. Uh, anyway, let's see. We can go here. I guess they're playing discard. I should hold sandbag some lands now. And we'll send in. We could, like, sack to uh, draw a card and still have five power, but I'm going to decline. Yeah, I should have played the Fiend if we're going to play it. I'm a little nervous of yeah about some sort of white here. But... Yeah, what's going on? Is there is there a five-mana sweeper I need to worry about? Yeah, minus two, minus two to all would be... not great. But... I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna play. Minus two, minus two, if that was their turn next turn would be unfortunate, but we would get a draw out of it and we'd still have a warmonger attacking for a bunch. So, and we'd ping. So it's like not even the worst if they were to find a black and, um, and try to, yeah, we can even save our hobble fiend, for example. Finishing blow indeed. But let's just do this. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know what Oppa was trying to do, but it didn't come together for them that game. Uh, fine way to start. Sorry, my record and stuff is wrong. Let's get that adjusted. Oh, that's weird. Why is that? <laughs> that's funny. I'm a mess. We are on free to play. I think they, yeah, they cast like one spell. That was uh, kind of a goldfish moment. Uh, I'm going to refresh my beverage and take a short bio break. I'll be right back and we'll keep trucking and try to get to seven. Okay, hang tight. Thank you for waiting. Let's jump back in. Another keep. Missing a two again, but we have our three already this time. This is a little bit expensive, but wasn't going to pass the uh, setup for the turn three warmonger. Well, we would definitely trade our arsonist for the imp, so let's offer. Flooding a bit, but with our uh, spells in hand, not the worst. Um, not going to sacrifice here and not going to offer our Warmonger for the Imp. Although, the, you know, you could argue it given that we just want to get the Gormond through eventually. But I'm going to send Arsonist now and uh, hold back the Warmonger. To hold back this Warmonger, they have to tax themselves uh, a mana per turn. So there's a way... I'm sad we're not getting in for damage, but... The threat of the Warmonger is doing some work because Oppo needs to hold up black to keep that defense up, so they're operating a mana less, or they're freeing it up for us to attack. Second Imp. Yuck. So here we're going to discard the Gloom Sower, although we, we're almost at the point of hard casting it. You could make the argument to not discard the Gloom Sower, uh, but I do want to draw a card here. Let me, let, we can attack first though, and at this point I may, um, may want to offer the Warmonger for Fetid Imp, and then, because now we got two Imps to get through. That's no joke. You want to just send the arsonist see if they want to trade it now that they have two? It's possible. Yeah, let's 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 give them a chance. Well, if we swing with both, they're definitely going to trade for the warmonger. And so the question is do we want to do that? And um I'm going to say yes, because we just want to clear the imps away. We don't have removal in our hand right now. We want to clear the imps away uh, for, for this stuff. So I'm going to send both and offer the trade. Tough call, though. We're immediately going to draw our uh, steel tech. I'm going to discard a creature. It's close, but I'm going to discard. Four, 
Floody flood flood. If they don't come up with a creature here, though, oh, they do. Why don't we make them choose? Ooh, a thrill is nice here, but we'll save that for next turn. For right now, I think hard casting the gourmand and letting go the arsonist is fine. We get one of these two creatures. They probably have to sack the glutton so that they have something to deal with the gourmand, unless they have something besides the imp. But uh, we're going to do this and then hope to find it. Assuming they get rid of the glutton, next turn we get to thrill away this swamp and try to find an answer for the imp. Um, yeah, we could attack. Oh, that's a good point. We can just attack with the, uh, the, what I was thinking, if we cast this first, we can get in a hit with the arsonist, but it's not as valuable as them possibly trading off for the lurker. So I'm with you on that, Tron. Let's see if they're willing to trade off, uh, for the lurker. Yeah, I didn't think they would, but certainly worth, uh, doing as Tron pointed out. But now let's do this. All right, that suggests they have removal for the Gourmand, because if, if I uh, could not deal with the Gourmand, I certainly would not be uh, offering up my Imp there. But maybe they think they can race with the lifelink. But it could be just attack first and then kill when I don't block. All right. And we got the finishing blow to make um, this Glutton, or this uh, Siege Striker not look that great. Uh, we could be a little bit risky and thrill away the swamp, and if we draw a second land, we still get to finishing blow. But given our level of uh, control here, I don't like that. I think we should just uh, finishing blow the glutton, get it off the table, and start swinging, and we can thrill next turn. Hey, Sonic, uh, we can talk about managing that stuff after this game. Uh, see if you can remind me when we're done here. Ah, so they did have a, an answer. That I mean, I was wondering why they uh, left that threat so accessible, but there you go. They had, they had their plan for our gourmand. And if we find our reanimator spell, we get to bring it back and get a free sack. Uh, so let's get rid of this swamp here. Try to find some better action. Devotee. Let's just go for max mana though here and uh, play our ogre. Dead Ogre. Never forget or always forget. I'm more in the always camp. Um... Now it's a little awkward because with one more creature, suddenly the Siege Striker is representing a 3-3 double strike, and that's significant. I'm going to go... We'll just play our stuff, though. The question is, are we attacking? And if we attack, what's our plan in the face of 3-3 uh, three, three double strike? We don't really have one, so i got to keep the Lurker back because it can solo block a 3-3 three, three double strike and at least trade. I wouldn't mind our Witch's Cauldron, because we could do some stuff with it. Uh, this says Summoning Six, so 
Oh, it's true. Sorry, I thought it was a, a tap ability. Yeah, I should have played that because then because I thought it we, we couldn't do it. Um, but it's your end step, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Sorry. Let's read the card. Let's read the card together at the beginning of your end step. So it's not something you can do on your opponent's turn. If a creature died this turn, blah blah blah. Decent thing to uh, sacrifice to get this going, but we don't really have those tools yet. Um, I like the arsonist out though because it can actually help us. Uh, well, let's see what they end up finding for. If they end up with a creature, it it matters. Um, yeah, we can attack with the 3-4, and then Arsonist back gives us a plan there. If they want to kill this, that's fine. We get a zombie, and we can chump with the Arsonist if they don't. And we have Magmut to ping. Lifelink is troubling. I know, it's like, auto mod is like, learn to spell. Are you sure you want to let this misspelling stand, Ryan? Oh, come on. Just not what we wanted right now, of course. Um, do we try to send something in to die? We could send in the Lurker again. Right? Because they either take three, which is pretty significant, or they lose the Striker, or they lose the Glutton. And if they trade for the Lurker in any capacity, we get Devotee action. And we still have Chumps um, and potential blocks on the uh, Glutton, even if they take it. So yeah, I'm going to send the Lurker here. It's a little close. It's close, but I like continuing to apply pressure while we have this devotee available. So they get a card, but effectively so do we. James thought about sending everything, but yeah, the glutton was just too much, I felt. The red shrine? It would do it wouldn't do that much though, right? It does does it rummage? Maybe I don't remember what the red shrine does exactly, D. Um, what does this do? Okay. Well, we got to try and trade here. And I like just, uh, our, yeah, the, the arsonist and the one and the three, two. Yeah, but it's not a rummage, right? You don't like pitch and draw. It's just straight up pitch. I'm ready to ping. I'm ready to ping. Wow, the blood gluttons are gluttonous. A million blood gluttons in a scythe is kind of a deck, I guess. Let's do some hunting. Uh, can we just win? We greed. 
and we can geyser for one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, almost. Instead, though, we should just use the geyser to kill the glutton outright here. Just trying to see if we could win, but since we are one short of just winning outright, we got to go for the uh, control play. Yeah, I mean, obviously guys are the glutton, but obviously win the game if that was a possibility, right? <laughs> I like winning the game when possible. Fun. They are not dead yet, as they say, but we're looking pretty good here. Oh, I won't forget to make a zombie because the it fortunately this is a hard one to forget, right? <laughs> it kind of puts it in your face. Nice. Was that you, Tron? Or are you just saying good game to me in the abstract? I didn't notice who I was playing. Sorry if it was uh, if it was you. Good game. Oh, sorry. Let's see if we if I can cancel in time, we'll take a little short break here to talk talk economy. I won't take too long on this, but I do want to hit Sonic's question. I might not have a perfect answer, but I can do my best. Can you hit me with a question again, Sonic? How do I sustain my drafts? Do I simply spend gold on drafts and use the gems acquired to keep drafting? Yes. Um, let me let me um, let me start it from this. So, hey everybody, Sonic Zephyr had a question. Sonic says, "I've just read the Hipsters of the Coast article on how to build a collection by rare drafting. This left me with a question, though. How do you sustain your drafts? Do you simply spend gold on drafts and use the gems acquired to keep drafting? Thank you for your attention. I have not read the article you're talking about, so I'm not sure exactly how Hipsters advocate it. But I, I've long been an advocate of rare drafting." Uh, as a free-to-play tool on Arena. And one of the tougher parts, though, is deciding when to rare draft and um, whether or not it's it's worth it, like what gives you the most value. Uh, that's maybe not exactly the question you're asking, but is a, is a factor of it. I'll, get, I'll say to your question exactly, yes, I use all of the gold that I grind on draft entry and then all of the gems that I earn from draft entry to more drafting. The key with... Um, maintaining your play on arena, depending on your win rate, though, is like it is is pacing your play. If you uh, one of the big things I advocate is recognizing that as long as you have quests, you know, if you have quests that you haven't completed yet, if you haven't uh, won four times yet, you know, uh, we have uh, in you know, I'll get into the smaller view here, like. Um, you know, you get up to 550 gold a day just for winning four times. So basically, as long as you are playing for gold, you're playing because you're a, you're earning gold in quests or earning gold on your win bonuses, then you're really doing good work towards uh, recycling your resources to keep drafting more. The moment you find yourself playing without the incentive of gold, Either you've won four times today, or uh, uh, you don't have any quests you're working on. 
then you're you're getting diminishing returns, especially if you're playing in events that you've spent money to play in. Because if I pay an entry fee, and then I play in that event while the game is paying me back, I'm getting a rebate on my entry fee, right? So if I play draft right now while I have these this gold to, to get, I'm getting a rebate on my entry fee. If I enter a draft and play it, on an account that has no quests to do and has already won four times today, you're way in the hole because the game is no longer paying you back to play. So fundamentally, you really have to ask yourself whether you can afford to or want to draft under those circumstances. And it's also why I strongly recommend a second account if you're someone who finds yourself regularly forexing rares of a set and regularly wanting to play after you have completed 4x of your, uh, sorry, not completed 4x, after you have completed your quests and your four wins. So if you regularly find yourself wanting to play after winning four times on the day and completing all your quests, and you always get 4x of a set, you really ought to open a second account to as kind of your um, overflow account. And then you go and play limited on that account and think of it as a limited only account where you don't care about the collection and you simply go over there and play limited or grind some uh, low level constructed to get the resources to do it. And it becomes a way to continue to play after you have <clears throat> uh, squeezed all the gold value you can out of your uh, main account. You start to squeeze some gold value out of a side account instead of playing for no gold value on your main account. So. Uh, long term, if that's what's happening to you, you should really have a second account. However, if you're never forexing sets and you just don't play enough for it to matter, then then whatever. This is really a, a technique for those who are playing Magic Arena, Magic the Gathering Arena heavily and are looking for ways to mitigate those those costs. And um, but I wanted to get back also to the rare drafting front. If you are a budget player who often runs out of gems and resources, it's a tough question to decide whether or not to rare draft. Uh, set building collections is is a good reason, but also um, if you are going to forex the set, eventually those uh, those cards become gems. And um, if if uh, and it, so, you can think of um, a rare draft as affecting your gems positively, but. Taking a good card for your deck also affects your gem EV positively, right? So the big fundamental question is like, is this unplayable mythic better or worse for my gem expectation than this removal spell? And it's a really tough question to answer. Um, I have a chart I could show you, but I want to make like things have changed uh, in terms of the value proposition of the cues. So the chart may need some updating, but the bottom line is, uh, I my metric is if I'm a rare drafting on a rare drafting account is that I want it to be basically like a two for one type spell or better like it needs to be premium removal or better is kind of what I want out of a card for my deck over a rare if my main concern is gem EV so uh, that's my take, hopefully that's uh, something that helps you out there, Sonic, and, and, and helps, gives you a, a little handhold on uh, how to approach this uh, format and this, uh, this, this economy, right? This free-to-play Magic the Gathering arena economy. But fundamentally, again, uh, play on your main account until Wizards stops paying you gold to play, then either stop for the day or switch to an account that will continue to pay you gold to play. And uh, ba basically, I'm not a, I'm not that good of a player, but I am wildly positive EV because I basically only ever play when uh, when Wizards is offering me gold to do so, uh, or when you guys are here. That's the other thing. So sometimes I don't follow my own advice because I'm streaming and it matters to hit the end of the event uh, that day. But honestly, if I were not streaming, I would be finishing. Like, where are we at here? We're at uh, two wins. Like if if I were not stream, like if we if we seven win, we're gonna play till we get all seven wins. But if I was off air, I would stop playing at four wins and go play on my other account. So, anyway, uh, that is my thoughts on that. Hopefully, that's some good info for you. Quicker Premier Draft is going to depend on your win rate, and uh, Hat has given you the link to the spreadsheet where you can plug in numbers to find that out. But um, 
quick is generally going to be better EV for medium-ish players. If you're like 55 plus percent win rate or better, the premier stuff starts to look better than quick, but also it's like bot versus non-bot that you really have to keep in mind. All right, we're gonna keep this. It's missing on some of the pieces, but we have cauldron and the greed for the cauldron sacrifice, so that's fine. Dave, the, the point is to not pay to play magic. That by uh, that you can that you can draft more and play more limited magic without breaking out your wallet. Perfect draw. Well, you're a turn late. But at least we got something before uh, turn four here. Yeah, I talk about four wins a day. Uh, True calls out um, that by running four accounts, they, they don't always get their four wins a day on every account. The first win of the day is worth 250 gold. The next three are worth 100 each. So if you're juggling a bunch of accounts, you kind of switch from a mentality of, oh, I need to get in my four wins on the day to, oh, I need to make sure I get my first win on the day. All right, we're gonna put Oppo to the test to see if they know uh, that Turret Ogre has reach. I fail this test some percentage of the time. Let's see how Oppo does. Puppy man. Thinking it through. Hey, Tron, I didn't ever see. Did, did I play you? I, I, I might have missed your res response, but did, did we battle in the last game? Oh, you just meant good playing. I did. I found your response. Never mind. Attack. Ogre doesn't have reach. Oh, man. How? It's not even fair that my opponent knows that Ogre has reach. Uh, should we take the visionary? Cut him off from some ramp here. Get in for an attack. Pump the fiend. Yeah, let's do that. And uh, you can either sack it for a life and a card or uh, sack it to the Hobble Fiend to be able to attack through. That's an interesting... Um... Yeah, we could also have taken... We have Finishing Blow for what they ramp to as well. And this allows us to apply pressure now. Um, let's go for the card. Yeah, but I, I was gonna—I was thinking we would go for the card, so I didn't really care about the other Hobble Fiend. N no, I couldn't with the floating mana. We had to use it then. No, 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 not a rookie mistake. I looked at, I have some meme ideas and I hope to do some work over the uh, weekend, but uh, 
I don't, and I, I pondered some options for a rookie mistake, but the trouble is it's not a very good card and it's just not gonna see that much play. Uh, do nothing. Looks like we know what they're up to. It's a shrine deck. We gotta kill them before the shrines take over. Uh, yeah, exactly, Hat. Let's see. Tempted to sack the Hobble Fiend just to get a card. But we could offer a trade, too. Certainly don't want a finishing blow as Skyscanner. I think I'm going to go for the uh, sack a Fiend, looking for better action here. We can do better than a Fiend. That doesn't seem good, but at least it guarantees a Gloom Sower next turn. It's You're not wrong, Rob, but you can understand why I want to put my uh, creative efforts into cards that are going to be actually resolved, right? Did I ever look to see what format your memes are, MP4, except, oh, uh, MP4 works. I mean, any there, there's a lot of video formats that work, but MP4 sure does. Yeah, we'll play this. Sorry, Oppo, I'm not trying to stall you. Yeah, Turret Ogre is better here than it was in War, but that's going to be true of almost any War reprint at Common Uncommon because the overall power level of this set is so much lower, the relative power of the identical Common reprinted is going to be higher. No, Rare Drafting literally just means, to me, the rares. Awesome. Hard to argue with Puppy Man's uh, approach here. We'll see if we can get it done before the shrines do us in. But I love uh, I love Puppy Man's deck here. And now, uh, just gonna offer the Hobble Fiend. I know they just get to take the Hobble Fiend trade. But what I'm trying to do is clear the way so that if they don't have a, a creature, if they just go Shrinage on us, we could just drop the Sower and it could be enough. And so I, I also could, you know, we could go for a card here, but I want the blocker out of the way. Because then we get Sower with Finishing Blow backing up the Sower. And now they need, like... They need to strip our hand or kill our creatures or the shrinage isn't going to be good enough. That's a lot of cards, but uh, right now we're showing 12. Man, we might not even be able to get there just because like 12 isn't enough, <laughs> you know? 12 isn't 14, and this is going to start really wrecking us. Great deck, Puppy Man. I'm Jelly. I want to do this sometime. We just didn't get there this time. Well, haven't gotten there yet. Uh, rough in like five different ways. We didn't have the cauldron to sack it. We didn't have, and we drew land. Oh man, this is just like, like four different things went poorly for us there all at once. That was awful. At least we have the mana for the cauldron if they come at our sower. 
Just so. As I said, they drew so many cards, we're just going to have trouble here. And of course, our deck is not helping out at all. Uh, I am just going to scoop. We're not beating this. That was our chance. Three mana against shrines every turn. Bloody, like, we're just not. We're, that, that game was over. Mm, I mean, Slam Dunk says, I've been kind of ignoring shrines like I did the ultimatums. Seems like I shouldn't. Um... Shrines are a different kind of build around than the ultimatums. I mean, the ultimatums, you could get just the one and then work towards getting the tools to cast it and it'd be all right. But um, like, just because Oppo did that to us there doesn't mean that like shrines are the thing to do. Uh, you just have to go for it and get lucky. I think Oppo uh, probably got very fortunate. I'm curious to know when they picked the rare shrine. Did they start there? and then uh, just build around it the entire draft? Or did they get it late and get lucky on that? But we could certainly say, uh, if we ever get that shrine, pack one, pick one, we could just say we're going for it. Oh, this is so close to very good in the sense of a uh, red and a black would give us the magmuts. Oppo going first, but we don't have anything going on here, so we got a mulligan this, unfortunately. This is also not great, but we got to keep it. And what are we sending back? I'm going to send back the geyser. Uh, we have more likely value, in my mind, out of finding a black and cauldroning away the arsonist or whatever than uh, hoping, that, hoping that we find enough mana to make geyser good anytime soon. Found our swamp. Almost played the cauldron, but let's uh, start on arsonist. Arsonist, mutt, and then cauldron. Ah, second swamp means we can actually play and hold up activation on cauldron on turn three. And we have ogre on four now. We got another mutt. Just kind of casting our stuff until a plan emerges here. Solemn is. Is that the right pickup here? Yeah, we could go. Let's go for the biggest thing, actually. Could be another removal situation, though. So maybe yeah, I'll start here since if they have another uh, Dragonfire, this, although Dragonfire does deny the card draw. But maybe that's okay. Nah, it's not okay. I'm going to go with uh, Turret Ogre so that we can get the. Nah, it doesn't. Yeah, it's the best power. I'm going to go with best power. Since this is a, a bad effect to hit the simulacrum anyway, we'll go with highest power. Actually, I could have attacked... Um, should have attacked first, too. Didn't think through my turn correctly. I bet they should be at 17 right now. A little mini punt there. Because uh, if we attack with the Magmut and the uh, Cauldron and Arsonist, there's no way they block the Magmut. That only cost us one, because we would have gotten in two instead of the ping that we're going to get. So it was like a one-point mistake. That I will not make this time. Mm, 
small argument to be made for holding Simulacrum until we have the cauldron to sack it, but I'm not going to be that greedy. Tron wants to hold lands. Uh, do we have looting? What are we holding lands for? Discard? We can hold it because, I mean, we have the geyser at the bottom of the library, so this is the reason to, like, oh, we shuffled, though, right? Yeah, yeah, we shuffled, so geyser could be anywhere. Yeah, 2x thrill. Thank you, Rob. There we go. That's a good reason to sandbag a land. The thrill is not gone. We are, though, trying to cast, like, seven drops and stuff, so I am going to hold one, but I'm not going to... I will hold one for the thrill. That's a good call. No, it wasn't a bluff attack. It was uh, legit. We have Cauldron Sack Arsonist to, for an onboard kill. Hmm. I could sack this now to target this and uh it would tap it and get it out of the way, but then I wouldn't have the blood I wouldn't have the onboard trick to threaten the Pegasus. Um But let's start mowing their hand a little bit here. Because we get a card out of it. Interesting. They don't know about this one. So, interesting spot. We can eat we can just drop the arsonist and kill the Pegasus. We they had to toss a real card though to keep the Hallow Blade alive. So we could also uh, just play the Arsonist and threaten the Hallow Blade some more. Uh, we can even go for it right now, like ping it again and force him to discard something else. Like, Kill Pegasus is tempting, Mabinap, but look what they had to... They discarded a Forgotten Sentinel. That's their worst card right now. If we ping the Hallow Blade, we either force them to discard something better than a Forgotten Sentinel or give up their Hallow Blade. So I'm going to do that. Uh, what we want to do is not uh, neither now nor after they draw. We want to do it during their upkeep. So they still have to choose from these three cards, but they have to tap the Hallow, the Hallow Blade on their turn. Because um, I was still pondering the possibilities. Stranger Collins wondering why I attacked then. I, I thought we might kill the Pegasus, then I kind of changed my mind uh, by the end of combat. Oh, wait, cancel. Sorry, now I'm forgetting my own plan. Uh, I want to go... We do. We have seven drops to cast, too, though, so I'm going to play the mountain, and we'll keep that swamp up. But now we're done on playing land, basically, unless we really flood and want to get ready for that geyser. There you go. The rest of their cards were so good, they needed to let that thing go. Which is scary in and of itself. <laughs> and there's our geyser. What do you know? Hello, geyser.
Oh, they're gonna actually get value. Bye bye, cauldron. We got some good stuff done with you though. All right, now I like uh, Geyser the Mutt. Attack for two. See if they leave the Pegasus back to block the Simulacrum next turn, and then we can go Simulacrum, uh, Archer, the Pegasus. We could also send in... Get the card. Now this would get damage. Yeah, we could attack and draw, says Tron, uh, and then still kill this. But there's something to be said for getting the damage in and then also setting up the, the uh, uh, Pegasus death next turn. I'm just going to kill. I'm going to follow my... I'm going to do my plan. All right, that's good too. Hopefully they'll see this as just us trying to draw a card and go ahead and let us have it. Nope, no such luck. Darn it. Well, now we've got to uh, drop this the archer and we're in a bad racing situation. Well, maybe we're in a medium racing situation. That's not the worst. And we can draw a card off the Hobble Fiend sacking the Simulacrum after we attack here. Cross fingers that both of these connect. I'm gonna do this now because we may find something we wanna cast off the Simulacrum. such as a Pitchburn Devils. Great. And with a one mana activation there, we're going to go ahead and, of course, now we're going to draw a Thrill, right? But I, I feel like we have to uh, set up to be able to sack this Pitchburn Devils. I mean, we can Lightning Bolt the Gaggle Master right now if we needed to. Quick aside that I continue to love, love, love these gain lands or otherwise ETB tapped dual lands um, as a partial replacement in the basic land slot. I think juicing up limited uh, with these cards in the basic slot is fantastic. You knew it. I told you. I told you. It was still the right thing, but of course. We sandbag all game long. <laughs> uh... So funny. Um, yeah, so we could make this a 4-3, uh, kill this 4-3, and then have two good attacks. That just seems too, too correct here. Sacking doesn't help, so we just have to let that one go. But we can attack through Pegasi, and if this is nothing, we're still in a good spot. And all of our draws are live. Either we draw something to pitch to Thrill, or we draw something we want to cast. Kind of want to draw something we want to pitch to Thrill, right? Perfect.
You know it. Now I might as well just hold up two. Like, we, we've we already used our geyser. And we can cast everything in our deck with that. <sighs> Cereal. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do the pity check. Fifteen cards, four lands left. That's actually pretty average. That's a little better. Uh, however, got to wait a turn before we can do much with it. But right now we got have good attacks again. Let's see what they answer with. And let's see if we can just make this ironclad. There we go. There we go. Deck toyed with us a little bit, but we found what we needed and got there. And we've made it to a nice three win level. Probably the most important win of your premier event, that third win that gets you from uh, 250 gems to the nice 1000. Now we're gonna go for the 400 gem bump with the fourth win. Yeah, we had lots of avenues to win there. The uh, Rise Again gave us outs as well. We do have Devotee with any land on three. And Hobble Fiend plus Devotee is quite real. And we're on the draw, so we have some draws to try to find the red. I'm going to keep this slightly greedily. Hey, got there. Never punished, right? You all know that. And I'm actually, I'm gonna open on the Mutt here. I really want this Hobble Fiend Devotee combo to be available and uh, we're gonna save our Sacrifice Outlet because of that. No, I don't think Trader's Greed is first pickable. I think you wanna get into this deck and then pick these up uh, later. This is not uncommon because it's wildly powerful. It's uncommon because they just don't want this particular ability to show up that much in draft. Blue-white with a Pegasus on two suggests uh, blue-white flying is what we're up against. This is going to be fine until they find, a, like, a Flying Lord, or they cast the uh, everything gets plus one, plus one counter. You know, that would hurt, too. Like this, kind of like, not a flying lord, because it doesn't uh, increase their power, but certainly up against heavy flying here. Uh, but we get Hobble Fiend. Uh, can't attack because I don't want to trade off the devotee for a watcher even. Uh, we're just going to have to hope that Traitor's Greed, the Watcher, and, and you know, if they just have a bunch of one-power one, one power flyers, we can handle that. It's, it's, if this army becomes countered up, that we are in big trouble. And there is that common all your creatures get plus one, plus one counters sorcery that I'm worried about. Still, we'll go uh, no attacks here. I guess we could send the Magma. They're never... Uh, they're never trading it off, and if... Uh, oh, they have the easy Concordia and Pegasus block. Never mind. Yeah, we're going to say no attacks.
Let's see where they go with this. Um, if they go with the devotee, we have to just let that happen. Anything else, we could consider sacrificing it. And, like, this is okay. Like, I want the devotee, but I think we can still get a lot done. But that's, this is what, so yesterday we faced a deck with a bazillion ghost lights and we still beat it because they didn't have any action going. If this opponent chains a bunch of ghost lights together, we're just done for because they have, they have, they're actually creating attacks. Although not like uh, we were blocking with a devotee, but they're, they're winning the race with this tempo, applying the pressure So we're in big trouble now, folks. What can we do to get out of it? We got five mana. Uh, if we cast the Traitorous Greed, we end up with three extra. So we could Traitorous and kill and play Magmut. Ideally, we would want a Traitorous kill and get a, get a token out of it, but that doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, and it looks like we actually have to kill... the uh, highest power flyer over the Watcher. You, you think we need to kill the Watcher, Tron? I'm more, more worried about three power than, although this is probably gonna be three power every turn, right? And it does uh, make their hand, oh, we don't know these are flyers. Yeah, I feel like Watcher's already d had its value, and we just want to get the uh, the most expensive thing. I'm going to take that. Go black. And then... What? No, 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 no. Hold on. Oh, no, that, that works, that works. Had to do it now to uh, use all our mana. Could have swung and sacked post combat, but then I wouldn't have gotten the magmut out. So it was somewhat of a similar proposition, but this way we got the magmut out. Yeah, we're getting rolled. Uh, maybe on the play we could have done something, but frustrating to lose to such low-powered flyers, but there's just too many of them. No, you're... Oh, yeah, you're right, True. I should have selected red, then we could have done it. Uh, it wasn't going to matter in this case, but yes, True has the right line. I, I messed up that play just a little bit. We could have gotten the three extra damage in. They could be at nine right now. It was uh, not going to be enough, but I wish I had pulled that off correctly. Uh, and just making sure we're stone dead. Yeah, we're stone dead. We got to move on. No, it would have been three damage, right? Because we attack with a three power flyer for free. Gotcha, yeah. Fiend would have been one power less, right. All right, come on, we can do this. I want one more win out of this deck. 3-3 three, three would not be the worst. I wasn't super excited about this deck anyway. So actually, you know, if we end up 3-3, three, three, it'd be like, all right, that, that I, I didn't even know how we were going to get... It, it was tough to see exactly how this was going to win besides getting a tempo advantage and pressing it. So if we lose this one, so be it. But uh, I would love to get to a fourth win, get that 1,400 gems secured, and... Um, secure above 500 with the effort as well. This is a little sad. We're looking at uh, four, five, five, seven is our hand, but we do have both of our colors and turret ogre isn't the worst four and we have a lot of early plays. Anything in our deck is good. 
because uh, either we're going to find land to allow us to cast these uh, expensive cards, or we're going to find our cheaper stuff. I get, you know, there are some expensive stuff. Our worst draws are expensive stuff, and there is still expensive stuff in the deck. Tron says mole. Anybody else have opinions here? This is a close one for me. Uh, if I knew what Oppo was doing, it would be easy. If Oppo were on aggro, it's a snap mole. If Oppo is on control, it's a snap keep. Um, Mabinap wants to keep. Oh, this is right on the edge for me, folks. I'm going to mulligan. Yeah, most draws are good, Mabinap, but the trouble is the land draws, while solid, are not actually great. So I'm going to mulligan. And I have to keep this now. Yucky. Drop a Gloom Sower and hope we find red for the Magmut. There's the red, at least. I slightly disagree, Hat. You say we need land and action? If they are specifically on aggro, yes, we need land and action. But if they're not going to pressure us, we need land or action. That was kind of my point, right? That I thought it was an or, not an and. Uh, here, though, we can play the mountain and uh, thrill away a swamp at end of turn. All right, deck, that's one way to approach it. Uh, I'm not gonna be greedy here. We'll just get a blocker down and ping. Kind of your worst case archer here. Well, for, for playing it on curve at least, just playing a 3-3 three, three that pings for one, not great. Seems fair, deck. Seems fair. Keep it up. Trouble is, we don't have we don't have anything nice and expendable for this uh, gourmand. I don't want to sack an archer to cast this five five. I mean, I might, but like all they give up is a magmut. That's not amazing. Well, what do you think this is about? Some combat trick or another, but gonna have to trade for it eventually. I'm going to make him have it because I'll trade this for a combat trick. That's fine. It's just that then we can't cast this at all. But I didn't want to cast this sacrificing the archer anyway, so I'm going to make him have something here and trade for it. Geyser. We need to geyser this sage now. Do it while uh, they're fairly tapped out. Hat says, thoughts on trying to combo Archer with the one mana black death touch trick for kill? Uh, I think it's a little too cute, mainly because I don't like the uh, the one that the, the death touch combat trick. If you have your reasons to pl <laughs> to play that card, otherwise, then uh, then maybe you're there for it. Like, because skeleton's playable on its own, but I don't love the combat trick. But uh, if you're doing that thing anyway, and if that card is good anyway, then sure. Well. Kind of got worked over on this one, folks. What are you going to do? Six, 
sad way to go out. Started off strong. Did we start three? No, we started 2-1 and finished 1-2. Boo. I think I saved this deck out, but rather than um, rather than play some more with this deck, let's just go draft again. We'll claim this prize. I'm not sure I'm going to play out all my games here, but we can start another draft. Uh, let's go to Soapbox and say goodbye to YouTube friends, though. Uh, another 3-3. Three, three. I didn't love that deck, so I guess it, it's easy to feel sad when you start 2-1 and one and then end 3-3. Three and three. I think if we had started 0-2 and I ended 3-3, three, three, I'd feel like, all right, we did it. <laughs> As it is, I really wanted to get that fourth win and failed, so I'm a little bummed right now. But uh, that was fun anyway. We got to explore an archetype we haven't tried yet, so I like that. And uh, now we're going to go draft again and play at least a, a game or two of it and see how that goes. We'll catch you uh, next week. Bye, YouTube.